I knew nothing of what anybody was doing in my 20s. I didn't know if they were winning, losing, going out, not going out, unless they walked into the fucking liquor store, which some of them did. I literally had no fucking idea. Get quiet and focus on your own shit. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Hey everybody, uh, really excited about this uh, uh, interview. Uh, so for everybody who's watching on LinkedIn, let's put in your phone numbers. We're gonna call somebody in LinkedIn Live, put in your phone number and your question, and then the team's gonna pick which ones. But I have the super handsome, wildly accomplished Damon John in the building. Can't say that when I'm right next uh, to Millie Vanilli's uh, You like that, right? I'm head. excited about that. Right, Blame this, it on the rain. Power shift, uh, when's this out? Uh, March 10th. March 10th. 10th, it's February 24th, the recording, it's probably out in a couple days, so do you want us to launch, do you have any preference on launching it? We'll figure that out after talking. Yeah, we'll figure, talk, out, we'll figure it out. Uh, Damon's got a new book, it's called Power Shift. Uh, I'm excited to be with him, we've jammed a bunch. There's At one point we're gonna be very old men and look back to our films together and yep. that's gonna be fun. Uh, obviously, a wildly accomplished entrepreneur, uh, star, one of the stars of Shark Tank, but more importantly for me, um, I've re- I'm, I'm starting to get really like, weird as I get older, meaning I've gotten very focused, even recent times, even more around kindness and like, who do I wanna be around? Who yeah. do I just genuinely, like, I saw you very recently, maybe four to seven, eight, 10 weeks ago at a, a, a keynote that we were both we were both speaking at an event and I saw you for a brief second because yeah. you'd spoken, I was in the green room, I was running up and like, it was really interesting. Um, I was on stage, they're just kind of announcing me, we saw each other, we dapped it up and as I was walking on stage, it was I literally was speaking to myself before I said hello to the crowd of like, it's really funny when you like somebody, what happens with your chemicals in your body. It happened when I just saw you in the lobby and it's happening right now. I like nice. Yeah. And so for all your accomplishments, obviously I don't know you all the way through and haven't been in enough situations, but for me yeah. personally, from what I know, I really appreciate your niceness and I think you're a nice human. That's the nicest thing I can say. And so I'm glad you're on the show. I think the same here. I think that when we see each it. other, you know, we, we've been, we've talked about getting the families together, but you and I probably realized that shit ain't gonna happen. Or it will. Right? And then we, it, you it know, will, it's like, it, it's it's like not, you get streaky, right? It, right? Yeah, exactly. It. It's all gonna happen. Yeah, and uh, that's the type of stuff I talk about. You yeah, know, tell me about the book. We'll, we'll What's going it. on with we'll get, you? We'll, you look good. The show's yeah, everything's I'm, going I'm well. Feeling, it seems I'm like from afar. Good. You know, I just turned fifty-one uh, yesterday. Happy um, birthday! I, I thought I was gonna thank you. I thought I was gonna wake up a little s- smarter, and I thought the world was gonna change. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed, man. I, I was calling today more on Monday because I got a question for you, man. Please, why are people so fucking stupid? There's a lot of fucking stupid people out there. Well, how do you mean it? Well, here's what happened. Well, how do you define here's, stupid? Here's why. Yeah. Here's why yeah, I'm, I'm stressed. Excited. Here's why I'm Go stressed ahead. today. The first yeah. day of 51, because people are still morons. I put up something that I saw in Media Black, something, 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 and it broke down and said, you know what? Do you realize that uh, the inspiration for X Men for Stanley was Malcolm X and Martin Luther King? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Magneto was Malcolm X. Destroy the world. Fuck them. They they don't like us. And and uh, uh, Xavier is chill out. The inspiration for it. Is that true? So that's fucking cool. So I'm not going to jump around and just assume, right? I go and do my research. I find various articles, uh, History Channel, what people. I put in a link in my bio, and I represented Stan Lee for the last five years before he passed uh, as licensing his name. I called his family and said, "Is this true?" Everybody confirmed. That's neat. Most of the people on there said, "I didn't. I didn't know it's true. I didn't know it's true." But there was about. Five percent. I see. I'm sorry. I'm not. I, I'm now. I think I'm following. You posted this. Posted this. And when you're saying, and most I showed you that, and I said, if you want to go to my link right. to check this out. You mean comments in comments. your post? Comments. Go ahead. Showed pictures of him yeah, and I. I obviously, I'm pretty accomplished. I've been around some really great people. Yep. Half of the half of the morons out of the five percent were. It's the not 2. true. 5, two point five percent. Right. So two point five. Okay. It's not true. Okay. These are the people that that, are, that only get one source of information from any place and every place, and Do they don't. Do you think it was a racist statement? Like just well, straight well, up, I'm just curious. Honest. Probably right. Uh, yeah, there maybe. Was racism, I don't know. There was race on both sides. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you why. Because the ones who said it wasn't true happened not to be of African American descent. Okay. The other half happened to be of African American descent and said, "Well, then why didn't he just Give make love. them black?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 
Number one, if he would have made them black, this would have been called the Martin Luther King and Malcolm X Chronicles. And we've already seen that, how it was going down. He got inspired. Doesn't right. mean the entire context of the entire yeah, yeah, body of yep. X-Men is Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And the other half of the ignorant ones just didn't do their homework. It's right there in front of you. All you had to do was read the link and then go and do your research. I think why, 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 what, ha what? But here's the good news. If there's more morons like that, then you and I and the hardworking people watching this with common sense and homework and busting their ass can survive, can you know, thrive. You know what's interesting? Survive. You know, it's really interesting where my brain goes on this. I'm, I'm deeply empathetic. Like, you know what's funny? Like, I don't know. Like, I understand what you're saying, period. Next sentence. It's wild to me how much that doesn't upset me. It actually, like, it doesn't upset me. I just, humans are humans. Uh, you know, I'm grateful. More When I see stuff like that, I'm more grateful because I've been thinking a lot about like what makes somebody not like something. Yeah. And when I see anybody not liking, look, I think the big, you know, it makes me grateful that I do like. I'll give you a good example. I was just thinking about this and it's perfect with you. Like every time you're winning, as an entrepreneur, right? And there's yeah. a world right now where entrepreneurs are superheroes, yeah. right? Yeah. And let's call it, there's 500 entrepreneurs that probably have attention at a superhero level. Some people are Superman and 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 Spider-Man, you know, Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. Elon mm -hmm. Musk. Other people are, you know, Rogue from X-Men. Like, mm -hmm. there's, everyone sits in a spot. It's been really interesting. I'm uncomfortably competitive. Like, I wildly want to win at all times. However, in parallel as a contradiction, I think the world is so abundant that I really cheer for people when they get wins. I love it. Yeah, like I want to win. And like, do I think I'm competing with every other entrepreneur? I do. At the same token, I know I'm not competing with any other entrepreneur and the world is abundant. Anyway, this is one long-winded thing to say of like, if you have the energy to dislike or hate or drag down or tear down buildings, shit's not good in your soul. It, true. but. If you are just not even going to the point of hating, I don't think they hate it. They just made comments without doing their research. Now, what's going on in their life? Because if they sit around, listen, maybe some of those people are super successful. I, I don't know. But yeah, if something's not success. going on in their life, why don't you so look and say, me it's, why? It's not, whether it's hate, it's like, it's like the energy, the energy to try to tear something else down, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, it's fascinating. Look, I think the greatest thing is happening right now. The internet, in its current state, people call it social media, call it whatever you want. The internet in its current state is exposing human beings at a level we've never seen before. Absolutely. And everyone thinks everything is super bad, and I think this is the beginning of the greatest era of the human race. I genuinely believe that. I genuinely believe that the fact that we're now getting a better view of ourselves is going to lead to very interesting good behavior hundreds of years from now. I really well, the believe more, that. The, yeah, the more the data, the more the information is out there, the more you can scrape Everyone's it. Everyone's like, oh, now it sucks because social media, FOMO, all this. I'm like, we've always been insecure. We've always been. 99% of people are insecure. Yeah. Or whatever, it's 92 or 79. And a stunning amount of people are insecure. And when you're insecure, the way to mask that is to buying things to disguise it, and tearing down others. Judgment. Yeah. Well, there it is. So there it is. Anyway, so that's That was how I, your 51st I, 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 birthday I, I, started. That was eating me all day I'm on how. I'll be honest with you, I'm more pumped because that makes, I'm like thrilled that now I know how the X-Men was inspired, yeah. which is fucking epic. I, so, so, and then he would go on and obviously do other ones. One other one, now this is where I need to fact check because I haven't had time. I had heard it right after I posted it, that when he did Black Panther, I believe, uh, they said something on the nature of uh, like in three series in or five, and maybe we could check it while we're here. Hey, you need to have some people of other colors, some white people in, you know, with the Black Panther thing. So I believe he the next one he put in was the Black Panther beating up the KKK. So <laughs> that's what he was. But we have to fact check that one. We have to Black fact check Black Panther's that. first appearance was what? In Fantastic Four? Yeah. Did I nail that? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. good stuff, man. Why'd you write this book? Why'd I write this book? You're under contract and you need to bang him out? No, 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 no. It's extremely good. hard. I'm, I'm dyslexic. And, um, you know, so I wrote this book because it was about one week that I got, as we all get out things from people all the time, and they were asking me how to create change. 
in their lives. And I've seen you say it often, you're not gonna do anything right after I tell you this, right? Yeah. Most of them, right? And they were all using and masking it with, well, here's my job, here's this and that. You know, Warren Buffett says something really amazing. You may go throughout various aspects of your life, but the only thing that you are fully in control of is yourself. And I realized that people just didn't understand what they can do today to make them better for tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And it was all about negotiation. I think the this, the the thing that makes me or somebody else more successful, less successful, it's all of the aspects of what we negotiated in life. First of all, with ourselves. Second of all, with the surrounding and the, and the families or whatever the case is. Third of all, with our position. Listen, I was born black. That's not gonna change. I'm no. not gonna be Chinese, white, or yellow tomorrow. Nope. That is what it is, yep. and that's what it is. Get over it, move forward, use it as an asset in any place that I can, whatever the case is. So people always thought, that negotiation and those things of that nature to create change is either you having all the power or somebody else taking the power from you or they got to give it to you. And which it's leads not to, that Which way. leads to deep unhappiness. Exactly. The second you think somebody else is in control, you're in big trouble. When somebody else is in control of your destiny, you're in big trouble. Yeah, I but, think about this a lot. And I, obviously it falls into race and gender issues, but I actually think about it in parenting dynamics so much. And it happens when, and this is a three part. You have to build influence, you have to then negotiate, and you have to nurture a long relationship because this part of the relationship where you just had created some kind of value is nothing comparison to here. And it has to all be concise. And I don't think people understand it. So if somebody said, if I'm in the elevator with Gary V, I never thought I'd see Gary, he was in Oklahoma, I never thought I'd see Gary V in my life. How am I gonna build influence with him when I got 90 seconds? Listen. First of all, make sure the pitch you say really quick is, uh, you know, what's in it for Gary, how you've been doing really well with it, and the fact that you're gonna be successful with or without him or not, but if you can have, if you can uh, offer some opportunity to him, let him know. Your influence is when Gary and his team is gonna go back and look at the shit you've been saying for the last 10 years on social media, good, bad, or indifferent. They're either gonna say, I want this person around me, or I don't want this person around me, and it's not just you. You're hanging out with this person right here who you would never bring to Gary's office because he's an alcoholic or a misogynist or racist pig. Stop taking pictures with him, posting them all over your site because Gary's not just looking there. Gary's looking everywhere around you and people don't understand how important the influence was that they had to build prior to then negotiating and then uh, valuing the relationship. And I, True it's just reputation. simple stuff, simple stuff. Simple when it's quiet in one's head. Right, like Very I've been thinking simple. a lot about this. Like I wanted to ask you this: How quiet and slow are things for you? I've been thinking, and here's how I'm saying it: Like you hear athletes talk about when the game slows down. Yeah, I'm manic in my schedule, and my I'm a you know I'm also an extrovert by nature, and so there's a lot of things that go on with my energy, and I wish there was a way that I could explain to people how slow everything feels to me. Same here. Good. I'm Same glad. I, I was. I thought Same. that might make sense. I mean, but that's why we see each other on the road so much, and people ask, "Why do we do it? Why? Why shouldn't I do it? You know." Well, I'm, I'm, first of all, if you like it, that's yeah, already the it. best I'm, part. Yeah. I'm tweaking my life, and I'm making sure that. All right, uh, family needs to come out here. I need to spend more time here. I need to do more of this off. I need more great people around me. A lot of more Robins. So I'm Batman and they're Robin. They're Robin. I'm Batman half the time. I need I need more of this because I'm not going to die. I'm not going anywhere. What am I going to do? And I'm educating myself while I'm out there. I'm expanding my network. Can you explain to the kids out here how crazy you feel at 51, how young and alive you feel? Like, does that scare the 18 year old you? Could you have ever imagined being this fresh at 51? No, you know, when, <laughs> we, right? when we were that age, I was thinking like 51 was, this, you know. I, I always tell the story, yeah, my know. cousin Bobby was in the, my dad's liquor store when I got there. He'd been there since he was 18, he was 30 when I was 22 and got there full time. I thought he was so fucking old. 30 seemed like, that's yeah. why I wanna hang out with the youngsters that work for me, I'm like, I get it. Like, yeah. I always laugh, I'm like, man, I think like, we're, like I think John and Jason and I are the same and they think I'm fucking like their dad. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, we're homies, like brothers. They're like, yeah. no, dad. <laughs> and I'm like, I laugh about that because th I'm 44. 30 seemed old as fuck. Knowing kind of your roots, it must blow you away. I've been in like, 35, we, since the new year started, I've been in 35 cities. <laughs> That's amazing. But it's, they're, half of them are fun. Golden Glows, McGregor fight, uh, Oscars, Super Bowl, you know, whatever the case is, speaking, and then hang, then taking my family to Bahamas, and then, Cartagena for a wedding, speed. it's great. Speed. 
It's great. It's great. And yeah, it does. LinkedIn, also. real quick, I apologize. I'm going to get a little more about what this yeah, book's yeah. about, but I want to use most of the majority of the 20 to 30 minutes that, you know, to answer some questions. So look, regardless of what the book's about, here's your chance to ask Damon a question. So put in your phone numbers on LinkedIn. We're about to get some going in a minute, but I want Damon to, listen, anybody in our community, if, if listen, I'm not this person, but if you're the person that actually learns from books, if you're part of this community, I find it highly unlikely that whatever discounted price on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or where the fuck you can find this, that it's not gonna be worth that ROI if you know how to get information out of book form. So I highly recommend you picking it up because I know this dude doesn't put down bad product. But like, Damon, for the people that are like, ah, fuck that, like, I don't wanna spend 16 bucks. Yeah. Like, if you can go narrow on to why this book versus just following you on social or anything of that nature, is there anything, what, how are you, for me, when I write books, I'm able to go deeper yeah. on the shit that I'm putting out headlines on and go narrow and then thus I think it's worth 16 bucks. I always think that way. Yeah. How do you think about this? Yeah, so so first of all, of course, you can get any information from me free all the time. CNBC, ABC, uh, you know, on my social media all platform. All these BCs. Yeah, but of course, of course, absolutely. But if you wanna go narrow and deep on how to basically create influence and then how to negotiate and how to develop those relationships, then this goes granular into it. I have about 10 subjects in there who have all went from industry to industry and become titans in various different industries. Pitbull, my Bomba Socks guys, Chris Jenner, uh, uh, Billie Jean King who changed the face of tennis. So oh. so this is not just, you know. And tennis I, I, changed the face of like women. Uh, women and sports, women. right? So this is obviously you were in my last book. I only take subjects out that I can learn from on the same path as you are in this. You know, when I'm talking to somebody about negotiation, a lot of people don't realize this is really easy because of social media. People talk in five different ways and they communicate in five different ways. Sight, sound, uh, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. And it's very simple. If you're on social media and you can look through people's feeds and you wanna talk to them, it's like a used car salesman. Used car salesman, you walk into the room, he, he starts to listen or she starts to listen to how you're communicating. All right, there's a red Corvette there, it has the top down. If you're about sight, he goes, can you see yourself driving down the road, look at the leaves falling and, and on, a, on a winding road. If you're about smell, he's like, can you smell the rich leather? Yeah. You know, can you smell the air in the crisp air, you're about sound, can you hear the engine roaring? Yeah, and the, you see, and there's various ways of communication. You see us do it all the time with Shark Tank because 65% uh, of communication, as you know, is body language. Uh, the uh, Only 7% is exactly what you're saying and the rest is how you said it, right? And there's various different ways to indicate and go through a negotiation. That's why when I get deals, I can see when the person putting their hand in their pocket, putting their hair over the air, Robert sitting up and he closes his book. Uh, you know, uh, what's the name? Uh, Kevin O'Leary always wants to put something in between you to create the distance. And there's a lot of information in this book of keys on way to communicate, build influence, and then nurture that relationship to get way more after that. I love that. Let's get some phone numbers in. Um, who's the first person? Rodney. Rodney, all right. While he's Rodney. pulling up. All right. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. So you think that there's a lot of... There's a lot of nuggets in this book that you take away two and three and four of them, they just helped you close one deal. One deal's ROI positive. They let you get the remote control away from your wife or husband. Hello? Rodney? Yes. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on with Damon John. Gary V, how you doing? I'm Damon doing. John, how you doing? I'm great. Rodney, What's happening, where are you from? I'm over here. I'm from Miami, Florida. Let's go. I'm living in Atlanta right now. I love it. I'm listening to your LinkedIn and you called me. I was not expecting this at all. Well, you put your phone number in LinkedIn, so it worked out. <laughs> hey, nothing much. Hey, uh, so Gary V, I got a question for you, man. And, and and I see that you and your brother have your agency going on right now. I'm pursuing my master's uh, to become a sports agent. Looking forward to that by the end, uh, by the beginning of next year, uh, to be a certified sports agent. Uh, what advice would you have for 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 a young guy like me? Uh, entering that entering that field there. I got a background of playing football, have friends in the NFL right now. Uh, but for me starting out, you know, being so close to the game, what advice would you give me, uh, you know, to become a successful sports agent? Well, let me give you my take and then Tim, see if you can fill out some spots. So the biggest thing I've learned, AJ's been in the business now for four years, Vayner Sports. The biggest thing that's really honest is that it's a lot more simple than you think. Like, I keep watching us lose, let me go a different route. The players that we lose to other agencies where we're offering disproportionate more impact financially and infrastructure-wise, strictly because that player liked 
a different agent more than the agent we put in front of them, whether that's AJ or Brandon Parker or Tommy or Brian, you will be blown away, my man, of how much of this is strictly being liked. Strictly being liked. You will be blown away. You're gonna go into this business and be discouraged because you're gonna be like, wait, the five biggest firms, back to what Damon said, he's not gonna change that he was black. I'm not gonna change that I started it, at, well, that I was not athletically inclined or educationally inclined, which made everybody from the 70s and 80s feel like shit if you, for the first 18 years of your life. Like, like, that doesn't change. And I'll tell you this, no, when you get into the game, if you start small or a small firm, you're gonna go what every agent does, which is like, woe is me, it's CA, it's Rock Nation, by the time you get into it, we're like on our way, we have 13 guys in this draft, it's been written, we're gonna be a player. But the reality is, I'm watching people strictly pick people on likability, nothing else. Not what they can do. Like plenty of people go to Rock Nation because they want their selfie with Jay-Z. Plenty of people go to Vayner Sports because they want business and life after football and off the field stuff. Plenty of people go to Athletes First because Mooligetta is a great agent and they built a thing that like, there's a lot of places where people go, I am stunned, and I mean stunned, on how many people go with the person they liked the most. Liked. Right, right. No, so right now, I, 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 I'm a very likable guy. Uh, I get along with <laughs> Well, good news. Yeah. Good, new, good news. Yeah, so, You're so, gonna, real quick, and I'll let you jump in, Damon. Good news, you're gonna talk yourself out of all the things, you're gonna talk about all these other things that you need to do. Oh, we need to get marketing right, we need to be social media right. I gotta get some of my homies I played with football, co-sign, you're gonna think about a million other things that you're gonna learn matter, and I'm telling you 50 fucking percent of it is do human beings like you, and if you actually lean into that mentally, you're gonna get real happy, because you're gonna realize that you don't have to work on all these things that you think you have to work on. Damon? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's about the same thing. I mean, you got to go narrow and deep on your targets that you want. And like he was saying, you're going to you're gonna go everywhere. But I think also the co-signing of the people that you already know that really do like you. You could tell us you're likable, but everybody's going to be on their first date telling you, you know, your baby's beautiful, right? Uh, or they're beautiful. You got to dig deep into your into your, your dat- database and go after one, two key players that like you and that you like and that you can bring value to and just keep uh, having these other people also co-signing you. Like you said, you're going to try to get all these people. Just get one or two people that really, really mess with you to dig deep and you got to, of course, be out there doing your homework and be ready to pound the phones for those cats and let them see that you're ready to just put in the hours. You I'll, know? I'll give you two more insights because I really want you to win. One, everybody matters. I went through this whole thing of like, the parents matter, the parents don't matter. The, you know, the un- uncle matters, the uncle doesn't matter. The trainer matters, yeah. the trainer doesn't matter. The coach matters, the, here's the rule. Every Everybody fucking matters. person matters, because yeah. they're influencing, these are young kids. And then finally, complete and utter detachment. You're gonna get your heart broke. Some kid's gonna tell you you're his guy all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, and then it's gonna come to signing day, and they're gonna call you and be like, yeah, I'm going with this other firm. I'm sorry. See ya. I've heard those stories already. Gary V, I was out there at the Alabama Reese's Bowl game. I was definitely looking for you. Um, I was trying my hardest to look for you out there. Uh, saw you saw you pulling up out there on the field as I was leaving Alabama, driving back to, uh, to Atlanta. But, Damon, I got a question for you as well. If I can shoot this out there really quick. Go quick. Um, what, would you say that uh, Fubu can make a comeback? Would you bring Fubu back out? Uh, a lot of people, this is in the sound of brand, like Gary talked about, but... um. Where, where, what can we say, uh, see FUBU in the future? Yeah, you can go to FUBU.com and get that. Yeah, it can make a comeback. It all depends on how much energy that I want to put into it. And I have other partners that have been uh, putting energy into it, but it absolutely can make a comeback. It won't be on the same platform as before, just in retail. It probably should be a subscription service or, or one of those things. And uh, absolutely, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of history. It's a global brand. But we need to get our ducks in order, too. Thanks for the question, bro. Yeah, I mean, what an iconic brand. It is, and I'm with you on that. All right, let's get another one in. Yeah, man, I'm shocked how much, these kids are smarter than ever, but yet, there was one kid who's like logically talked me through while why we were disproportionately right for him, and then he said, but I'm going with another guy because it was love at first sight. Uh-huh. <laughs> who's this? Kasari? Kasari. Kasari, what's good? Hey, yo, Gary V, my man, what's going on? It's Damon, what's up? What's happening? Holy smokes, man. I'm truly humbled to even be talking to you guys right now. It's huge influence. It's an honor. Thank you, Kassar. Yeah, so my, my question is, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's pretty complicated as well. 
Um, so right now, you know, I, I live in Brooklyn. I live with my with my mom and my sister and my twin brother. Um, three of us live in one one single room. Um, Love. You no, know, so it, 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 it's been challenging. Um, no, I, how I old are you? Passion. I'm 22. Keep going. Ooh. I'm 22. I, I just I just graduated school, um, so I'm trying to figure out life right now. Uh, so I know I'm, I 100 know that I want to go into real estate investing. Um, that's that's really where I see like my business. Why? You know, don't get to it. Why? Uh, simply because I feel like I can connect to a lot of people, um, and also on the flip side, not having like a home, um, like where I could really just kind of be myself and you know kind of expand. Um, that's really also something that I just kind of. You know, I want to be, be able to give other people that, that opportunity um, in order to, you know, have a nice place to live. Um, so Makes right sense. now, I feel like the biggest struggle for me has been, you know, just pretty much the energy, like that's in, in like in, in the house in a way. Um, so just trying to figure out, you know, what is it that I could do just to kind of be at my best self? Because back back in school, you know, I was I was crushing it left and right. You know, <laughs> I was pretty much manifesting everything that I wanted to, and now I feel like it's hard for me to take action. Why? Um, so I'm I, that's I'm. I just feel like it's the negative influences of like my parents and, and stuff like that. Why, why are you still home? Is it that you're taking care of your parents? Or are they disabled or anything like that? Well, so you're 22. The why, well, so the, re the reason why is New York's a little expensive, so yep. I'm trying to save a little money yep. um, just to kind of, you know, stay at, stay at home for a, as yep. long as I could. Uh, but right now, like, I was, I'm but have you... I, was, I was actually, yeah. I, no, I'm sorry, please finish. Yeah, no, I, I was actually debating, you know, whether or not, like, I should go ahead and rent out an apartment. Like, I know... Are I'm you... I mean, it's really interesting. I, it almost feels like you're having a logical and an emotional conversation with yourself, which I think we all do. I love that you're thinking about saving and you have the humility at 22 to be in your home, which I love. Are you also in a place where... Are your, are your parents negative by nature? Like, is that, like, fucking you up? Yeah, so look, that's really what's really where it's been. You know, my mom and my dad separated when I was super young. So okay. My mom has been, she put four, four kids through college by herself. You know, Beast. She makes less than $20,000 a year. So, Beast. Um, super challenging for her just to kind of balance everything. Um, so that's kind of where that negative mindset comes from. And are you, um, and are you, mom, are you helping her? Yeah. Or are you sa saving because that's, um, she's an amazing OG mom, but she just happens to have, you know, through all that adversity, some negative vibes that are, potentially fucking you up. Right, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, Please. I'm not helping her. Um, that's I, that's I what I thought. Her, but she's she's, she's really proud, she yeah, she wants I get to it. She save my money um, and kind of just go, go after it in a way. But, did you, you, know, did, you ha did you happen to see the post I put over the weekend about this concept of like, build your crew, find other hungry people, and live yeah. an hour and a half outside the city? And like, did that, did, what do you, when you saw that, what did you think? I, I, you know, you know, honestly, I thought about doing that. Um, the only thing, you know, I, I do have a lot of loser friends. Like they're they're also going out partying. You know, I'm 22 years so old. That's what I. That's what most kids do. I do my age. But I've noticed, like, hey, like when I, I posted when I posted the second post where I said, take over my account, everybody, and find your people. And the hundreds of people that posted in there, they're from New York. Did it cross your mind to DM like all of them? Be like, yo, do you wanna do you wanna room up, or was it? What made you not think that? Um, so I thought about it 100%. Uh, for me, like, I'm very cautious as to like, who I interact with. I'm not, I respect I'm very, that. Not who I interact with, but who I live with. In the I way. respect that. Because I feel like, you know, it, for me, it's just all about like, having like the right energy, and I guess that's kind of like limiting myself and my but aren't you? But aren't you in that scenario saying no before you even met the fucking person? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because all you're saying is your family has negative energy and your friends are losers. So you have no other <laughs> option. You, you can only go up by moving in with a bunch of guys or girls. I mean, you know, people come over here from other countries and they ain't got time to play. They're coming over here and they're living in something for $50 a week or and they're busting their ass. And there's full buildings of them in New York of dancers and talented people and tech people. Why aren't you giving that a shot just for a month? At least, right. you know? Like, like where are you finding your, net, your my, networking my is going to be My problem with the way the answers came out is my... The thing that I spend a lot of time thinking about is why are people saying no before they've tried? And and the reason they're saying no is they're either not interested in actually putting in the work or they're insecure and they're fear-based, which is okay. There's nothing wrong right. with that. I'm just trying to really ha like bring value on this call. Right. And I'm trying to really break down like are you also negative by nature? You know, which is so, which is also fine. Like I really mean right. that. Like I I'm trying to get like 
I want judgment out the fucking window. I want like assessment and action, right? Like I'm not judging. Listen, me being positive and optimistic is literally completely predicated on the fact that my parents had sex at that exact moment and gave me that DNA. (laughs) It's I have no pride in that I'm optimistic. That was fucking Chance City, USA. So as a matter of fact, that that leads to gratitude and guilt and deep humility and compassion for others because guess what? My sister is not that. And I've watched her like I have more I, I respect my sister more than me. The thing those things came natural to me. Like I respect the fact that I got into shape more than I have all these talents because I actually feel like I worked for that. This was gifted. You just like you saying no for the other party. I, by the way, I fully agree with you. I do not think that you should live with people that you don't jive with. You fucking decided that every person that left a comment in my post was negative energy. You said no before you said yes. Right, right. Yeah, so I did the reverse. I did the reverse when I um when I first started Fubu. We were uh, fortunate enough to have a house. I went and worked at Red Lobster for uh, anywhere about fifty hours a week, and I would then come home work on Fubu for uh, thirty hours a week. I would sleep three nights, three hours a night. I had sewing machines in my living room, and I slept next to sewing machines. And I rented out my bedroom and all the bedrooms in my house for twenty five dollars a piece because I wanted those pe- to strangers to pay the mortgage, and they helped pay the mortgage. I was getting money over Red Lobster for my day job and that helped me uh, uh, do FUBU for five years. I would have had to do two million dollars in sales on FUBU to make the same amount of money I walked away with and I wouldn't have done that and I wouldn't have had FUBU. I just had to make another sacrifice. And some people paid, some people didn't. I got robbed in my hallway, my bathroom hallway one day. Uh, it is what it is. But uh, you know, I kick people out and uh, that's it, man. I mean, you know, you just have to, you have to act. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. How much entitlement or not entitlement do you think you have? Like from a self-assessment, because I think a lot, I think a lot about this. It's a really difficult question to ask somebody. Like, hey, how entitled are you? Nobody wants to be like, oh, super fucking entitled. But on the yeah. flip side, I do think entitlement and humility is an interesting framework for all of us to go through. Because if you're lucky enough on it, then and or to figure it out, it can be really good. Right, so I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I grew up my whole life, you know, pretty much having nothing. Um, like literally there were days where I wouldn't even eat. I, I would always have the meals that I had you know, in school and then I'll come home, wait those kind of, you know, eight hours, 10 hours and go to breakfast, run over and then just kind of go from there. Um, so that, that made me super humble, you know, just being a very grateful and appreciative of what I do have. Um, it's great, you know, but back in school, uh, back in college, People always, always saw me as like a positive person. They know, like, I was never negative or anything like that. I feel like being home, I'll be honest with you, has made me slightly more negative now. Um, in the sense that, you know, it's, that energy just kind of like rubs off on me. Um, so right now, uh, in, so in terms of kind of my entitlement, I feel like I, I've gotten slightly more, a little more entitled in, in the sense that like, hey, like, why can't I just have like a regular place to live in a way, which is kind of where this negative energy comes from. Um, but, but, you can, like, but you can, right? Like, like I guess my question is, like, have you got caught up in like New York's expensive, and I have no options? Right, exactly. And do you? I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. Do you have a job? I do. Okay, so fucking commute longer, bro. (laughs) Bro, hold on, Damon. I apologize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Damon. I really apologize, bro. Commute further. Mm -hmm. Like, who the fuck said you had to live in Williamsburg, Bushwick, or Manhattan? Like, what, like right. uh, there's people at VaynerMedia that commute two and a half hours to be here. I don't know, so, like, like th- this is where I'm going. It's an intro, and I'm coming from love, and I hope you can feel it. Yeah, like, no, no, it, I, I 100% could, respect it. And I, I feel 100%. like you can pick it up, too. I'm excited about this. Like, I'm no, trying to, like, no. on some real option shit, like, why not move yeah. far as fuck and commute two hours every morning? So, so Gary, I was gonna ask you actually. Please. You know, I, I really want to, I plan on you know, investing in New Jersey, like Union County and stuff like that. Okay. So should I just move over there and just be like, fuck it, like just go do it? <sighs> And then just figure I, it out. Later. I can say you this. Know, I can say this based on what I'm hearing. And this is a hot take off of fucking nine minutes and 40 seconds. I think that you should definitely get out of the house. Okay. And so for me, whether it's Union, New Jersey, which you're arbitrarily picking, like, dude, I, it sounds like you're very far away from real estate investing. No? I mean, so my whole plan was to, you know, to, to work with other, other investors who have been in the game for quite some time. Okay. Bring them deals and kind of have them pay me. Um, in Leads, that I get it. Of learning I get before it. I get like a, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I, I just think there's a huge opportunity for you to live further away where you can afford it 
and you're good. I think people pick convenience and like to me like an extra hour commute for that mental happiness is like a monster win for you. You were the fucking man at school because you had freedom. I'm just like cool, we won this game. Move an hour further away, get a little less sleep or a little less convenience. On that hour commute, the extra hour on the train, you get a lot of shit done and you're gonna be happy as fuck. Yeah. Like, I got you. Look, I, I think that's what I'm doing in that case. That, that makes sense to you, right? Because that's why I asked about right. entitlement. Like, yes, I know you want to save and I love you for that. I fucking love you for that. You've also assessed that the environment's negative. So I'm like, wait a minute, you can win both here. You can really drive down your rent if you're just willing to live an hour and a half from the city. This is New York City, right. the most expensive place. If you go an hour and a half commute outside of here, shit gets cheaper. We don't necessarily know that mom's negative. Mom busted her ass to put four kids through college. And maybe she's big, telling him some of the things. Are you kidding me? Like, like rewind maybe the she's fucking video. I'm a shit. fan of maybe the mom. Maybe telling him some of the shit he don't want to hear either. But you know, you Very never know, right? Possible. But either way, he got to go out and do it on his own. Whether she's right or right. he's right, yeah. he just needs to eliminate another excuse, exactly. right? To yeah. your point, she might. By the way, say, okay, I think you might know this. She might be right. It's actually irrelevant. Yeah. You're, you're on it, Damon. Like, she's a G. Yeah. For, Single mom put four fucking people through school? She's a fucking gangster. Mm -hmm. Let there be no confusion. Her execution. And doesn't want anything now. Are you kidding me? A fucking gangster. (laughs) Now, now it's a small space. It's a small space. All I want you to do is eliminate the excuse of your mom. Right. I'm telling you this not because I'm shitting on her. I'm actually shitting on the situation. And I'm hopeful that if you move an hour and a half out, this is notice what I asked you. How entitled are you? Mm-hmm. Look, and, and I have no problem moving an hour and a half out. Like I, I don't give a fuck. Like I don't mind eating shit, you know, for the next five, ten, fifteen years of my life. Just to that's amazing. Where, where I want to be. So good news. Um, move out yes. and make it inconvenient. Gotcha. And now, what about in terms of like saving money? Should I just bow, just budget better in that case? Yeah, like, 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 if you're truly trying to save money and now you've taken on a 500 or or $1,000 more of expenses, all of a sudden, every nice little thing you like has to be looked at. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 that's literally, I, I, don't, I don't buy clothes, I don't, I don't go, wow, I don't do anything. I, I just buy books and, and, and just read. And Good man. Kind of, you know, don't buy books. You guys and don't buy books? The internet's free as fuck. Like, I'm being serious. Like, every book, like, pirate them. Pirate Bay, like, pirate that shit. Go Google fucking Power, go look at Power Shift and crush it on fucking Pirate Bay or if that's still around. It's not, and up, it's not up right fucking now. Fucking steal it. <laughs> steal that up. shit. It's not up. It's not up. Of course he endorses it. I enjoy, I, I, of course he endorses it. We both I, I, I lived do, it. I endorse, I endorse. Go to garage your education, sales and buy the book for a quarter. Can. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. fuck $15 on Amazon when you fucking are building in the beginning. Don't buy shit. I gotcha. People don't know how to save anymore. Yeah, that's, that's, that's always the hard part. And, you know, even back in college, I every, every little paycheck that I got, saving, 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 saving. And, you yeah. know, I'm building up you know what's happening. You know what's happening right now? This is where you're getting caught, I think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. The fact that you're not paying rent and saving is allowing you to spend money on a couple things that you wouldn't have. And that's where the cycle's playing. It, it, not, not, no, honestly, not, not really. I Good. Like the, the only expenses that I have right now is just food um, and, you know, my, my commute, like my, my train ticket, yep. and that's really it. I, I, don't, I don't have I really... Good. Know, like, I, like, I, I believe so you. I believe you. Then, like, then I would say for happiness, instead of this happening in 11 years, let it happen in 14 years by moving an hour and a half right. out. Yeah. Again, w- w- one more thing, you know, and this is also kind of like with my job and stuff like that. Um, you know, I feel like it's, it's just a lot of people who like don't care about saving and and just you know as, you know every every other day just going after drinks and stuff like who that. Who gives a fuck? Their life has day. nothing. Who gives a fuck? Right. That's good. I like when everybody else is doing dumb shit. That means I'm about to win. Guys, so what do you feel? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are this. you telling me that you feel FOMO no, when everybody goes no, out no, on fucking no, no, thirsty I, Thursday I and FOMO. drinks a fucking mojito? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't feel FOMO. But I, I just feel like it's people who aren't focused. Like I'm focused and they don't have the same goal. Bro, let me tell you let me tell you something really good. Don't judge yeah. anyone. Okay. 
You see where I'm going? I'm watching a yeah, lot of judgment come. Uh, now I'm starting to spend some time with you. Like if we were yeah. having a four hour dinner as homies, I'd be like, bro, yeah, stop no, judging no, people. No, no, he gonna judge you after he gets off the phone. <laughs> you know, but like, you see where I'm going though, bro? I got love for my love, yeah, I see. And I got love for you too. Like honestly, be empathetic. Like be, be grateful that you're not in a, like I, what, when I talk, I, I you know I've been trying to tell people I don't have advice. I have I'm like every other human. We're animals that like to share hypotheses, opinions, our hot takes. But like like don't judge them. Yeah. And don't don't envy them. I hate when people are like damn yeah because his dad's paying for his shit. He gets to go to the club and deep down he fucking thinks he's a loser because his dad's paying for everything. Next, next, <laughs> like, like, oh damn, they're just buying those drinks or those clothes to fit in. Don't judge them, feel bad for them that their whole life is about other people's fucking acceptance so they have to fucking ruin their own lives just so everybody thinks they're cool. I, I think you're spending a lot of time on judgment. Don't even think about it. I knew nothing. I knew nothing of what anybody was doing in my 20s. I didn't know if they were winning, losing, going out, not going out, unless they walked into the fucking liquor store, which some of them did. I literally had no fucking idea. Get quiet and focus on your own shit. I love that. I, I, Does that I make sense like to you? Do. Yeah, no, look, I, I, I feel like, I was, I feel like I, I've been you know, struggling with this for like the past literally six, eight months since I graduated. And I feel like this just gave me a little more clarity and, and like- And, 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 and Kay, and Kay, action. I'll tell you something else. Yeah you're probably judging because there is a little underlining envy and FOMO, which is okay because we're humans. Yep. Right. You see where I'm going? Right, right, right. No, 100%. And that's okay. For me, like, it's just, I feel like I'm not taking the strides towards where I want to be. You're impatient. No. You're six fucking months, you're eight months in. We all were impatient though at that age, uh, you know. No, no, but but I, I like, I like how you said on, he's, he's willing, on, to, he's willing to eat shit on, for fifteen uh, years. Hold on, let's create some clarity because I know yeah. a little bit about your narrative. Yeah. Don't confuse ambition with lack of pay, you were patient. Yeah, I was patient. Okay. I, but I was, pa I, was, I was patient, but I was patient because I was making as many moves and mistakes as I could, and I was saying, all right, this is this is learning, something I'm not interested learning, in, this is, and I'm learning, learning. learning, and I kept moving forward, and I kept moving forward. That's different than when you're impatient and you start fucking like looking at things from a neck, you were, you were happy yeah. and patient. Too many people are sad and impatient because they can't wait to get to the finish line without fucking even warming up. Yeah. Bro, you're 40 seconds in. Yeah. No, what do you I think, think you're gonna be a I fucking real estate tycoon by 24? What the <laughs> fuck? I'm 22 years old in the way I feel like I gotta have my Go to sleep out. for the next 10 years. Don't even call me until you're 32 and don't talk to nobody. Go to sleep, <laughs> go hibernate for a decade and just fucking eat shit and work and be patient and then maybe kinda sorta at 32, young as fuck, maybe we can have a conversation <laughs> about something maybe. Yeah. Everybody's fucking deciding at 22, you're fucking eight months out of school. But it's crazy, it's like, I feel like I know what I want to be doing, I'm just, you know. I Me too, like <laughs> Me too, I knew I wanted to win a fucking Super Bowl as the owner of the New York Jets, so I decided yeah. to be patient for 52 fucking years. <laughs> I knew too, good news, me too. Now what? I didn't say a peep, I fucking worked in a liquor store in the fucking basement for 15 years before I even popped my head up to make a YouTube video. Didn't say a word, didn't go to a club, didn't buy shit, fucking work. And, punchline, built it for my dad and started over in a fucking conference room at 34. Are you watching, do you see how Gary's eyeballs are bulging? <laughs> no, that's, that's passion, I mean, you, you can't pay for that anywhere else. And what I want for you is, pa and you know what I want for you? Patience and self-awareness. You're gonna be, people lose by being impatient. Patience, bro, it's super real and it's super hard. It is, it is. I, I feel like I've, I've, been, I've been working on that like tremendously. I feel like that's given me my success you know, back in school and how I've, it's like- Hold on, before we go any further, now I'm really caught up in this narrative. No, 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 Tell me about school no, 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 success. No, 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 he, he got the band camp. He got that one day no, in band no. camp. He got that Al Bundy shit like this because when he was in school, he was hot and sexy, and now he went back to the hood and he's doing no. shit. Well, here's the and now he's like, I don't no, deserve this. No, no, I don't know about that. Go ahead, Kay. No, no, he's like, I don't no. deserve this. I was Kay. sexy in school. Why were you? In band why camp. were you sexy at school? No, I wasn't. I wasn't sexy. So you were happy. You were happy. Band camp. I was. I was. I was living life. But like, why? Like, 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 why? Like, 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 so pretty much. Why? Like, I, I felt like my mission was to kind of you know be that positive light in other people's lives. 
Okay. Right? And I feel like just having that self awareness of myself and everything that I've been through in my life, I felt like if I could translate that story and share it with others, and you know, just kind of, uh, I was really like kind of like a mini Gary V. That's really what people are calling me. Okay. Um, you know, and then that led to me kind of, you know, awarding and stuff like that means absolutely shit. But you're gonna so. appreciate this. The the part that gets confusing about Gary V to a lot of people is I fucking like. I'm positive and optimistic, but it's all based on merit and execution. Like, right. you can't build a business on just being positive and optimistic. Like, that's not my business. Right. That's just, so, so that's my, it. that's my giving. Right. I actually, and, and you know. And, and, and back in school, you know, like, I, I, like I, had, a, I had a good GPA. No, I, I was respect. my academic. Respect. But I was also, you know, I was also social in the sense that, you know. You were and, happy. And, and, like, and, I was happy, you know, I was social. He's you know, back, in, my, my, he's my, back my, in the hood eating so, shit. And he's remembering well, back in band camp. <laughs> okay, do you think that's you right? Know, I'm curious. I don't think it's right, but it showed me a new side of me that I've never seen before. Right. You know, Mom busts her ass to put him in the environment where he blossomed in band camp and now he's going back to shit and wondering why aren't times good like before? Okay. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and now mom it's your fault now I put my name on the milk in the fridge don't touch that that's mine mommy <laughs> but I, I see where you're coming from and, and, and also I'm just, I'm like it's like I know I have the potential in, in, within myself and in a way it kind of gets frustrating when I feel like it's being limited you know me being at home that's so really but here's the, here's the best part nobody's keeping you at home Right. You're choosing to be at home. Matter of fact, mom's like, nah, don't give me nothing. Don't give me nothing. Yeah, mom's killing mom's it. Mom's kind of like, yo, you mom. need to leave, homie. I already said, whole okay, that. That's she, a college home, education. One more time. Whole she, that. She, <laughs> she, you, she, of course, because nobody wants their baby leaving. I don't know. Yeah, my mother, she kicked me out. She's like, you, you on your own. You're 16, homie. <laughs> Go about your business. Go get that paper. Bro, you need to be careful here because if she doesn't want you leaving and she paid for your college, you're getting coddled. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she doesn't want me leaving because she, she's scared of being alone in a way. Because nobody else is there? Well, she has like, my, my siblings, but she's scared that everyone's going to leave her. She's going to be there by uh, herself. No, no. Like, that has nothing to do with you. Right. You're being coddled. You know that, right? Do you know how many people Wah. right now in my community are like mad as hell at you because they're in debt and they have nowhere to go? You know that, right? Yeah. You need to be careful here in a good way. This is why this is fun. Like, I'm, this is all love, as you can tell. It's like, all love, man. We're giving you tough love yeah, and energy. smart love and all yeah. that love, man. Listen, no, man, you need to be no, careful. No, you need to be careful here. You need to be real careful here because your mom is fucking amazing. And a lot of times when I talk about parents that create fake environments, we always paint them as super rich white families. What we don't talk enough about is immigrants or humble fucking work their whole lives for their kids and put their kids on and... You need to be careful here because you're coddled. Mm-hmm. And I want to see every receipt because the second you bought one cup of Starbucks, I'm mad at you. I've never bought Respect. Starbucks. I don't even hear coffee. Respect, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you haven't, but, but, what I, but I'm really serious on this on you might be coddled. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's rare Absolutely. to not have to pay rent. It's rare, it's rare, real quick, it's rare for yeah. your parent to pay for college completely. It's rare, right. it's rare for you to be able to not pay rent. So you might be getting caught because you're entitled. I mean, I'm super humbled by the fact that you know, I don't have to pay rent. Um, no, no, you're appreciative. Oh yeah, I'm super appreciative of that fact. But, you're, um, but, you know. but humility, you know, comes in the form of like you started this call with, you know, friends are losers and negative energy in a home you're not paying for. Yeah. That's called non-accountability. Right. Humility comes with, mom, how can I add more value to you? What can I do to get out of or, this house and or, get things done? That's right. And uh, help you with our siblings. And you're, using my ex- siblings. and you're using the excuse of mom doesn't want me to leave. Yeah. Because she says she loves you and loves having you around. Right. Fake environment, bro. It is, uh, you know, and, and you know, honestly, like, I feel like even though when I do leave, I think it may hurt her in one aspect, um, but I feel like if, when she sees that I'm doing well, it was, like even me going away to college was tough for her. Of co- um, course, bro. Yeah. Of course, 
the parents love their kids, especially the way you're painting your mom. Here's the other thing. She's ready for you to be a man, I promise. My favorite movie is Step Brothers, and they lived in the house till they were 40. I gotta, oh, I gotta make a family call. Damon, you're gonna have to close out this show. Okay, yeah, I love you. I'm being great. dead serious. Plug away for four minutes. I love All you. Right. Sell All right. Sell the fucking man. book. Okay, I gotta go. I really gotta All right, go. man. I know that's Appreciate so you so much, Gary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gary. This is the first time Slay said to close out the show. You Absolutely. Five minutes. Go. All right, so anyway, so we're going to close out, man, um, and I'm going to take one more call, but I want you to remember the one thing. Um, PowerShift <laughs> is the exclusive ownership of Damon John. It is it is watermarked. Any uh, rebroadcast and or um, uh, downloading of content illegally, you will go to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> All the best, brother. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Peace. Damn, you're a legend. So Thank you, man. You so Peace. Much. All right. That was a great call. I like that one with Gary. He, uh, I don't know. We went back and forth. Loved him. Hated him. Got in his ass. That was really absolutely amazing. Well, let's do one more call. Let's do one more call. This next segment is brought to you by Power Shift. <laughs> <laughs> Gary V's favorite book. He uses this all the time. I send him a copy. Changes life. Who's on the phone? MacGyver. MacGyver, I already like this guy. I'm gonna like it more if it's a girl. Wow, you wanna leave him a voice now? Yeah. MacGyver? MacGyver? Yeah, Jim. How you doing? This is Damon John here. I'm taking the place of Gary V for the last call of the broadcast. How are you doing? No way, bro. Yeah, I think it's kind of fresh. I'm good. How you doing? Where you calling from, man? Or where are we calling you at? From Seattle, Washington. All right, all right. Represent. So we got a question, a comment, or something like that? Yeah, man. I just, I just honestly wanted to say I, I soak up your guys' content nonstop, man. I, uh, I had a troubled upbringing. I guess you could say. Dropped out after tenth grade. The whole nine. Um, but I got an opportunity in the business world once. I got as a you know part-time middle way graphic designer. Realized I was better with communicating with people. And basically moved up in the company um, and just it found a lot of success, man. But honestly, a lot of it's tribute to guys like yourself and Gary V and being able to pour into us and, and allow us to soak it up and, and go get it. Wow, that's impressive, man. Uh, I only, that I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. That's impressive. I want people to know that they don't necessarily, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with college. If you can't afford and, you know, to go to college, people like you and me, I barely finished high school. We went out there, we busted our butt. And, and that's, that's really honestly what, what the book is about, like creating influence. You moved up in the company. You said you moved up in the company. Why? Why? Was it because of purely your talents or the way you were working with people? Couple of things. I would say it's, it's hard work. I knew everyone else had degrees and things like that, and I didn't. So I got to work ten times harder. Uh, naturally good with people. I'm one of those cats. You can put me in any scenery, any block, and I'll get along with anybody and everybody. Swiss Army you knife. Know how to kind of? Yeah, you know exactly, bro. That little chameleon, you know, capability in a sense. But and then just caring for people, bro, and being genuine and honest. And then uh, I, you know, I started. I was the third employee when I left. We had about fifteen employees, and I actually started as that minimum wage graphic designer, 15, 20 hours a week, and I actually became VP of the company. Um, and continue to grow. Good for you, have, man. You know, further opportunity since then, bro. And so, just, I'm thankful, man, that's for sure. I think you just hit it on the head. You know, when Gary was talking to the gentleman earlier today, talking about, you know, being a sports agent, people need to like you. I mean, the whole theory of power <laughs> shift, the whole theory of power shift is that you have to build influence. And how do you build influence? Look, you, you dropped out of school. You went to a company, you were getting minimum wage as a designer or assistant designer. You moved up to be the VP. The reality is that whether you are, uh, you know, in power shift, whether you're trying to get a better job, get an investment from me or do something else, people want to be around people they like. People want to be around people that they can sit next to for eight hours a day, five days a week for the next five years. And if you're a problem solver and you shift power to other people when you see that they can do something and they shift power back to you and then you nurture those relationships, you're doing exactly why I wrote the book. There's too many people out there using it as an excuse. There's people out there that would have been you and said, I dropped out of school. I'm only starting with minimum wage. I got all these hours. They're never going to respect me. The company's only three people. It's never going to grow to 15 and that's exactly the mentality so i thank you as well for learning from gary me and all the other people out there who just take the time to to put the information out there free or or anywhere you can find it and and i hope you're doing the same for the people coming up 
underneath you. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm involved heavily in the community and the business world, and I've actually been working on wanting to start something called Creative Culture um, one day, and that Creative kind of stands for a community of real entrepreneurs and aspiring trailblazers with imperfections to add value. Um, and really, it's about just empowering other people. Like, if I can do it as a high school dropout, got two felonies when I turned 18, like, the whole nine, you know what I mean, should not be where I am today. And I still got my, my ups and downs, but I definitely should not have the opportunities I've had. And if I can do it, any Joe Schmo can, you know what I mean? And I want to help those do that and just empower other people. Realize we're all imperfect, we all got our struggles, but we're better together. And if we get rid of that facade and help enable one another, we're all going to win long term, you know what I mean? I feel exactly like you do, and I want to make sure the people listening to you needs to understand that the mentality of an entrepreneur can be used within a system. You know, when, when I'm at my company, all my people think as entrepreneurs because if I was the only one thinking like that, these guys would just be putting, you know, uh, round pegs and round holes. But if you're an entrepreneur and you think within the system, I need to depend on my staff yeah. and people like you who think like entrepreneurs. Uh, so Gary V's back. I don't know if you got a question for him. And I think we're going to sign off right after that. We got a great bro, guy in here I, who I dropped out of school. Thank you. Yeah, got it. I just want to say thank you, bro. I'm, man, I'm so stoked you guys called me. I threw that on there just as a long shot, and it happened. So I'm, I'm stoked, man. Yeah, he, happy for you. Yeah, he dropped out of high. He dropped out of high school, tenth grade. Started minimum wage job as a designer in a company with three people. Moved up to vice president, uh, and Love. is crushing it. So, Love, so, congratulations. Thanks to him for holding it down. All right. All right. Buy the book. Power Shift is out March tenth. Tenth. Ted. That's good. That's it. Ted, That's you good. Want to right. do that call out. If anybody hits us on a DM or something like that. Oh yeah. What do you that? want, Ted? You, I see your growth hacking. I like. I like it. Do something here. So for people we didn't get a chance to. By the way, Ted started as an intern. He's the president of my company. I listen to Ted. Yeah, Ted's my boss too. Every time I see him, I feel like I have to answer to him too for no reason. Like, sorry, Ted. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so we're doing something called the Ten for Ten Challenge. So if you get ten copies of Power Shift and DM Damon the receipt on Instagram, he will pick. 10 people that Damon will call to talk about their business for 10 minutes. Skype. I love that. Skype? We'll call him. I'll call him. Yeah, we'll, we'll do whatever well, you the person yeah, wants to do. We don't Skype need to do call fucking Damon's whatever. number to be yeah. out there and like weird shit. But 10 copies, DM to Damon on his Instagram, and we will pick 10 people for I Damon love that. to talk to. I like cool. the growth hack. Awesome. All right. Well, thank DJ. you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gary V. Thank you, everybody here for investing in themselves and spending their time with us. They could be anywhere in the world. And they chose to be with us tonight.